driving you crazy that you can't stop thinking about food or wanting to eat. Well, in today's episode, we're going to give you some reasons why you might always be hungry, but we're also going to give you solutions to help you figure out a solution so you're not thinking about food all freaking day. I know. I used to think about food all the time. Yeah. Couldn't stop thinking about food. <laughs> yeah. Whether it was my green beans in the college dorm room or the popcorn or the microwave tilapia that I used to eat for dinner. <laughs> Because we didn't have a stove, and I thought it was super healthy. Yeah. I was thinking about food all the time. Yeah, when you were just eating the stuff. Exactly. Yeah. When I was trying to eat so healthy that my body actually wasn't getting all the nutrients that it needs. It sounds counterintuitive, and everyone thought I was the picture of health, mm -hmm. but in reality, I was starving. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny is I know that you and I both talk to people who feel like they're even eating really healthy, or they feel like they're eating pretty frequently, but they still feel hungry all the time. And sometimes they deal with it and they just feel miserable and sad and hangry, I guess. And then sometimes they just eat a bunch of food later in the night or on the weekend to make up for it because they follow something like what you were doing in college when you're just eating canned green beans and really lean, lean fish. So we figured today we would talk about reasons why you're hungry. We came up with seven reasons that we hear a lot from clients that cause insatiable hunger and we want to share some solutions that we've shared with our clients in our practice to help them overcome it because you've experienced extreme hunger i've experienced it it's not fun it makes you feel bad about yourself uh, so we're going to give you guys some clarity i think we should probably back up and talk about why we experience mm -hmm. hunger in the first place yeah it's not that there's something wrong with you and it's not that it's about willpower and just telling yourself no i'm not hungry what it's about is your body trying to send you a signal that it needs something. Yeah. It's one of the only ways your body has to say, hey, help me out here. Yeah. It's not like you can just look at your Fitbit or your <laughs> iWatch and be like, oh, it's time for calories. No, your body says, hey, I need something from you. And so a lot of times we interpret that as, no body, you're stupid. You are telling me the wrong thing. I need to follow this specific diet or I'm only allowed to eat every four hours mm -hmm. or I'm on this specific schedule and I can't listen to that. So we learn to shut off mm -hmm. those hunger cues when really our hunger is a survival mechanism. Yeah. You know, one way I always think about that is I always ask people, if you had a little daughter or maybe you had a son or just a small human <laughs> looking at you and saying like, mom, dad, I'm hungry. Would you pull out their recommended caloric needs <laughs> and say, no, little Susie, like, you've already reached your threshold. You're just going to have, no, you would never do that to a little kid. But people do it to themselves. Grown adults do that. And I think that that's such a great point is we are so conditioned to listen to external cues about our hunger that we're always just working against our body. And then we're like, why do I feel miserable all the time? It's because you're ignoring like a big red flag saying, feed me because you're listening to, you know, my fitness pal's recommendation. Yeah, kids don't care about social cues. If they're hungry, they're they're gonna let you know that they're hungry, especially yeah. a baby. A baby's gonna let you know mm -hmm. when it's hungry, but as adults, if it's not appropriate time to eat, yeah. <laughs> then we can't be hungry. I just had lunch. How, how could I possibly be hungry right after lunch? You know, sometimes I still even have to struggle. I, I still struggle with that sometimes in my head. I'll eat what I would consider a substantial lunch. Maybe on a normal day, it fills me up. And then I feel hungry an hour later and I'm conditioned from, you know, years of being like, okay, like you have to eat every three to five hours. You can't just have a snack whenever you feel hungry. I start to like bad talk myself. I'm like, why are you still hungry? Don't yeah. go back in the kitchen. And I have found that when I fight that, urge it always comes back and bites me in the butt later because I either overeat something later or I just start snacking on things that I don't really even want because I'm like oh if I just eat this like sliced cucumber then I'll, <laughs> then I'll feel good and I'll Wait, stop thinking about when food. have you ever felt good after eating a sliced cucumber <laughs> I couldn't tell you I feel good when I go back and eat the chocolate covered almonds that I really wanted <laughs> right after I've tried to stave it off right exactly okay give me one of the reasons mm. why people are feeling hungry all the time. One of the biggest reasons that I see people are hungry all the time is because they're not eating enough in the beginning of the day. Their overall caloric input, like how much they're eating, does not match how much they are burning. And that's not just exercise. I think a lot of really active people or people who are pursuing a weight loss or physique 
goal tend to be more at risk for this uh, um, cause of hunger because they're constantly exercising and they're like, why am I so hungry? Well, it takes a lot of energy just to live, first of all. It takes energy for me to sit here and talk to you. It takes energy for listeners to process all of the information. So you've already got a baseline of energy that your body's using. Add activity, even if it's vacuuming your house, uh, cleaning your house, going to the gym, running, you're gonna be burning a lot of energy. And so your body's gonna send you signals to refuel and replenish that energy. So one of the first things I see is people just under eat because they're not being mindful or they're purposely trying to restrict at such a low level that they feel miserable. So a lot of times people find it easier to not eat during the day because they're really busy. Yeah. And so you wake up and it's morning madness. You have to get a million things done in yeah. one hour to get out the door. You're not thinking about food because you're kind of in that fight or flight mode. You're stressed. You're getting out the door. Maybe you grab something, maybe you don't. And then lunchtime rolls around. Sometimes you can even work straight through lunch because you're super busy. But then as soon as you get home and things start to slow down, then you look in the pantry, it's like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> now your hunger cues come on full on mm -hmm. and you end up overeating, eating everything in the pantry while you're cooking dinner. Then yeah. you eat doubles of dinner and then you keep going back to the pantry for more or going to the freezer to get ice cream or you're popping the popcorn, whatever it is. So you end up taking in 60, 70, 80% of your calories at the end of the day when you're least active. Mm -hmm. I know at the end of my day, I'm sitting on the couch. Like, <laughs> I am not going to run a marathon at the end of the day. I'm mostly active during the beginning of the day and the afternoon. So I need most of my fuel at the beginning of the day and the afternoon. And even using your brain, even if you're sitting at a computer, using your brain uses fuel. It's an organ that needs fuel. And so if you're not giving your body any fuel, your brain's not going to work to the best of its capacity. And so don't wait until the end of the day or save calories for dinner because what's actually going to happen is you're going to teach your body that food is scarce during the day and then we get an abundance of it at night. Mm -hmm. When we get an abundance of it at night, that means we have to store it. Yeah. Your body's not going to readily burn those calories. You're going to sleep on those calories. You wake up the next day, guess what? You're not hungry. You're not hungry because your body hasn't burned through any of those calories from the night before. So it's just a really bad cycle to get into what would you say to somebody who's like i'm just not hungry during the day you know i don't feel hungry you're not hungry because you ate too much the night yeah. before or you ate too late the night before so i do this experiment all the time yeah. with people all the time yeah. i say okay let's try to stop eating by 6 p.m and then tell me what happens the yeah. next day. <laughs> you wake up and you're ready to go <laughs> exactly and if it doesn't work the first day do it for three more days and i guarantee you your hunger signals are going to come back to you mm. when you stop eating at a specific time you know one thing you even told me once way back when and i it always stuck with me uh, about that hunger thing is we hear this a lot where people say i just don't feel hungry during the day i don't think about food and it's because they're so entranced in whatever they're doing their job they're running around they might actually be hungry they're just distracted and not tuned into those hunger cues. Mm -hmm. So if you actually take a day to slow down and maybe you notice it on the weekends when you're not running from task to task, you do actually feel hungry. You're just aware of that hunger because you're not in that fight or flight, move, move, move mode. I've definitely had clients that have told me it, the weekends are an all day eating marathon. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's because you're now you're home and you're not distracted by all the things in your normal weekdays. So you are able to tune into those signals better but again it's one of those things where we want to spread that fuel out throughout the week throughout the days not concentrated on just two days at mm -hmm. the end of the week so i think we hit two of the reasons in that one is people just aren't eating at all during the day and they're overeating at night or i guess we only just hit one one thing that i would want to add on to that too is if this is you if that first reason resonates with you and you're like oh yeah like guilty of that Again, start eating earlier in the day and see how it goes. But you got to be mindful about what you're eating because some foods don't satiate you. Mm -hmm. Even if they're really, really healthy foods, you know, whatever healthy means to you, sometimes they don't just do the job. And I see this all the time with people who have a healthy breakfast with oatmeal and maybe like organic, fresh squeezed orange juice. And they put like a little bit of raspberries in their oatmeal and they're hungry an hour or two later. And it's because their meal's not complete. Right. 
they didn't put enough in it. Right. And so the biggest culprit to that, I would say, especially in the morning for breakfast, is lack of protein mm -hmm. and lack of healthy fats. Yep. Because many of the breakfast foods are super high in carbs without a whole lot of protein and fat. So we've got oatmeal, we've got cereal, we've got toast, we've got juice. Granola bars. Even the super healthy green juices. <laughs> like, those are probably just carbs and there's lots of nutrients in them, but you're lacking the protein and fat. And without protein and fat, there's no staying power in that meal at all. So when I hear people say, I don't eat breakfast because breakfast makes me hungrier, mm -hmm. that just means your breakfast sucked. <laughs> Say it again for the people in the back. Your breakfast sucks. And that's so true. I'll never forget, I had a manager when I worked at American Eagle in high school, and he would tell me that. He's like, I don't eat breakfast because it just makes, jump starts my hunger. And I remember just not being very educated back then. I was like 16 years old, and I was like, what? Like, you don't eat breakfast? I'm like, who are you? And that was his reasoning, and I hear that from a lot of people. So if you start to shift your breakfast to be not just carbohydrate, and especially not just refined carbohydrates, like those pop tarts or you know really low quality cereals that don't have any fiber you're going to be able to feel full for at least three to four hours and if you don't feel full for three four five hours that's a signal that you should probably add more fuel and more nutrients or protein or fat to that breakfast meal so that you're not making up for that later in the day and feeling that that you know ravenous hunger so like with that oats breakfast in the morning, what we need to do is probably, you don't need to add more oats. So people will tr will say, well, I only had half a cup yesterday, so I'll just add another half cup yeah. today and then maybe that will help keep me fuller. And you may feel physically full from that because it's a lot of bulk, mm -hmm. but you're still not gonna feel mentally full. So I would mm -hmm. actually say, stay at that same serving of oats, but then add peanut butter, almond butter, pecans, mm -hmm. something that's got protein and fat and staying power. You can even throw a little protein powder in there. Make sure you're cooking them in a milk that has protein in it, not just an almond milk that's 30 calories. Yep. Or a sweetened one. <laughs> or maybe you're the type of person that needs something savory mm -hmm. in the morning for breakfast. Maybe oats just don't yeah. get it for you. And that's okay. Like your friend might be able to eat oats and stay full for four hours and that's great for her. But maybe you can't. Maybe you need something like a pre-made breakfast burrito with eggs and kale and turkey sausage or something like that. But it's really about finding those combinations mm -hmm. that keep you full. I think a good gauge is, did it keep me full for three to five-ish hours? Yes. And so some, if you find a combination like that, keep repeating mm -hmm. those combinations. Or let's say if you have a piece of toast with egg and avocado, and then you're hungry again in an hour, maybe the next day you have two pieces. What are some of your good go-to breakfasts that keep you full? So this morning, I had exactly what I just said, <laughs> um, but I had two pieces of toast. Uh, one had avocado on it, one had hummus. Yes. So the one with hummus, I put tomatoes, cucumbers, and dill on it, and the other was avocado with an egg. That's one of my oh. favorite things. And it's it sounds super fancy, but it took like four minutes yep. to put together. That brings up a great point too, not that it's related to hunger, but you can eat non-breakfasty foods at oh, yeah. breakfast. There is no rule. Like I definitely do that too. I like a savory breakfast and I get bored of eggs sometimes. So I like something warm and sometimes I'll have chicken or salmon at breakfast just because it feels right and it fills me up. So don't worry about rules. Yeah, just yes. I was, I think it was yesterday I had my HelloFresh leftovers and yeah. it was like, pecan crusted chicken and broccoli <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah it just sounded delicious yeah. and I knew that was going to keep me full and it was already done for me and all I had to do was throw it in the microwave mm -hmm. so I think the thing you need to ask yourself is does this have fiber in it does it have protein and does it have healthy fat mm -hmm. if not that's going to be a reason why mm -hmm. you continue to stay hungry if you're eating meals with just carbohydrates or mm -hmm. just protein and veggies this reminds me of a third reason, if we're on the topic of breakfast, of why people might feel always hungry. And this could happen at breakfast, this could happen at lunch. But if you are drinking your nutrition as a smoothie or as a juice, and even if it does have every macronutrient represented, drinking your nutrition for many people, and not everyone, because everyone's different, right? But I find that a lot of people just don't find it as satiating, both mentally, right? Because you don't get that experience of like chewing food yeah. and really tasting food, but also physically, because it's literally pre-digested <laughs> for you, yeah. which is weird to think about. But if you were to eat an apple, I mean, you have to chew the apple, your body has to break down the component, the skin of the apple, it takes a lot of, of power for your body. 
And that gives your body time to register that it's getting nutrition and therefore can start releasing the proper satiation and hunger hormones. Mm -hmm. But if you put all of these super healthy greens and, you know, milks or whatever it is you're putting into your smoothie, your body doesn't have to work to break that down. The nutrients, they get sucked up real quick and you might find yourself hungrier than before. Yeah, I can drink a four or 500 calorie <laughs> smoothie in like 30 seconds yeah, and like then that. it never fails. It's yeah. not going to last me. I, I need something with substance a couple hours later. It may be enough to get me through if I just have to do something quickly, mm -hmm. but I'm not the type of person who could just have a smoothie for lunch and then go about my day. Yep, or any kind of meal replacement. But for people that like smoothies, this is what I always tell them because you get these people who are like diehard smoothie people, they love their greens, whatever, fine. First, let's look at the smoothie and make sure it's complete, but then also just throw something on the side to chew. Yes. Whether it's a small mini protein bar, those little mini sized ones, or a full one, depending on what you got, mm -hmm. a piece of fruit for crying out loud. Just masticate. If you don't know what the word <laughs> masticate is, just masticate it. Means chew to something chew. up. Chew something up, right? <laughs> at the office, masticate, whatever. <laughs> Go crazy because that does send a message to your brain that, okay, it's mm -hmm. eating time, we're good. Or even try throwing something more substantial in your smoothie like oats mm -hmm. or yogurt or something that's going to stick with you a little bit longer than just the liquids and the protein powder. Yeah, protein powder is important but does not keep you full. It's literally the protein in its simplest form, so your body uses it up really easily. Yeah, and again, you can add almond butter, mm -hmm. peanut butter, something like that. It's going to add a little bit of fat and a little bit more satiation. But again, if you recognize you're the type of person that just needs to chew up a meal, yep. don't force yourself to have smoothies just because everybody's on a smoothie kick yeah, right now. Just because everyone in LA is doing it. You know, you said something else that reminded me of, I think we're on our fifth one, fourth one, mm -hmm. fourth one, fifth one, whatever. You guys are keeping count. If you consume something really quickly, you said you drink your smoothies mm, yeah. really quick. I know I'm a fast drinker of anything, wetty liquid. If you are scarfing down your meal or you're distracted, you are not giving your body time to register that it's full. I know there's been times where I'll be eating alone and I pull up YouTube on my computer and I just watch a video, my food's gone. And even if it was a huge serving or a substantial serving, I'm like, okay, like I don't feel full yet. And I'll kind of graze around in the kitchen until finally my body's like, stop eating, like I'm full mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. And I probably overate. So if you're constantly eating really quickly, you might feel hungrier more often in between meals just because you didn't give your body time to register that it's full. And I know this is hard because we're in that world of always needing to be distracted mm -hmm. all of the time, but I can guarantee you if you sit down with just your meal, <sighs> just you and your meal, Don't. I would say at the most, listen to a podcast. Yes. Because you can have something in your ears, but you need to be looking at your food. You need to yeah. be connecting with your food. Sounds weird, but you're going to feel much more satisfied if you're actually connected with your food rather than... I mean, think about going through a drive through How many times <laughs> have you gone through a drive through gotten fries, and then all of a sudden your fries are gone? <laughs> and you're like, oh man, like how are my fries gone already? <laughs> because number. you weren't looking at them, and you were driving, and then you're looking down, and all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah. Whereas if you sat down with those fries, they're going to last you a lot longer. You're going to feel more satiated. That's hard for me. I'll tell you that. Just sitting there looking at my food. But eating with somebody else or eating in an environment where you can maybe watch something that isn't a TV. I found that was really helpful for me when I worked at the hospital. Eating outside, even if I was alone, just being around people doing stuff, it didn't really feel as lonely. Like I wasn't just like in my own head all by myself, mm -hmm. which sounds kind of depressing. But it does give you a nice distraction without just being a zombie in front of the TV and just like forking stuff in your mouth. Also, this kind of gets into like the woo-woo mm -hmm. world, which I know we're very like... Oh scientific usually at least i am you kind of get into the crystals <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. um but that being said it, it matters what state your body is mm -hmm. in when you eat mm -hmm. so when you're in a frenetic stressed state your body's not going to digest and absorb those nutrients as well as when you were in a calm state. Mm -hmm. So if you're eating constantly with everything going on around you, you're not going to get as much out of that food as you are if you're putting yourself in a calm state yep. while you're eating it. Agreed. Agreed. I don't think that's woo-woo at all. Okay. I'd be a real woo-woo <laughs> on you guys if you want, but I'll reel it in. Hey, you know what, though, is um, another thing that causes a hunger that isn't directly related to how people eat or what they're eating, but their sleep. Mm -hmm. This is a big one because I know you and I see it all the time. We have people who come in who 
maybe even better than us if we're just going to look at it from like a good and bad black and white standpoint, right? They're eating everything right. They're checking off all the boxes. They're doing everything you're supposed to do. And then we ask them about sleep and they're like, oh, I don't sleep. Well, yeah, all like, the time. I don't sleep. All the time. We get all those high achiever clients yeah. that sleep three to four hours a night and yeah. they've been doing it forever. So they don't think it's a problem yeah. because they're used to only getting three to four hours of sleep. So they're used to how they feel. Yeah. Same thing when people eat like crap all the time. Mm -hmm. They don't really realize how bad they feel until they change that habit. It's the same thing with sleep. When you recognize the difference between sleeping eight nine hours versus that three to four hours mm -hmm. then all of a sudden i've had people say the world is more colorful to me like i've had clients say like i can see the world in colors i didn't realize how dimmed everything was because i was just kind of powering through everything but the way it relates to hunger is your body literally increases the hormones that make you want to eat more because you're not getting energy from your restorative sleep. Mm -hmm. So it has to get energy from somewhere and food is one of those places it can do that. So it's going to make you crave foods that are higher in calories, higher in fats, higher in quick energy, yep. so sugars and things like that. And you can't just shut those cues off. You can't just say like, nope, I'm just not gonna do that. It's gonna make it so hard for you to walk by the donuts or the cookies or the bagels or whatever it is because your body's literally pushing you. Yeah. And to eat those foods. That is such an important point to make because I think people get frustrated with that. But that's your body's way of keeping you alive, right? Because your body doesn't recognize like, oh, you just got a bad night's sleep. You're a little stressed about work. It doesn't recognize that. It says, oh, there's a problem here. Uh, we need to push Megan to eat. I'm going to send her really strong signals to eat, you know, quickly absorbed sugars and food. And then people get frustrated. They try to work against their body. And it always comes and bites them back in the butt somehow. When you work against your body and you don't give your body what it needs and you try to fight against all the natural cues, you're going to feel even worse because you end up eating a bunch of things that you tried not to eat. And then you feel mentally guilty and mentally shameful. And it's just this vicious cycle. All in all to say is try getting a good night's sleep if you feel like you're doing everything right and see how your hunger changes or test it out on a weekend. Start to pay attention if you're able to sleep in on a weekend. See if you notice a difference in how your body reacts around specific foods. I think one of the main themes that I'm finding here and, and everything that we're talking about is listening to your body instead of shutting it down. Yeah, your body's your friend. It's it's, it's only trying to keep you alive. Yes, it's, it's your best interest. It's not trying to sabotage you at all. It's only trying to keep you alive. And we are taught over and over again that we need to follow these specific rules and shut those cues down if we want to get the results that we want. And so what we're trying to teach our clients is that there are no arbitrary rules that you need to follow. It's figuring out what is your body trying to tell you and how can we work backwards from there to make sure we're getting ahead of those signals yeah. before your body ever has to send them to you. Yeah, it's like you're taking care of your body so they don't have to send you cries for help. Exactly. And the beautiful thing is when you do take care of your body earlier in the day, maybe it's a day where you eat more than normal uh, during the daylight hours, your body's not going to send you strong cues to eat late at night. So if you slow down and listen to your body and say, like, oh, okay, like I ate a really big lunch today and then I was just feeling really snacky and I had a bunch of snacks in the afternoon and I'm not hungry anymore because I gave my body everything that it asked for, then you don't have to follow the rules of, oh, well, I have to eat dinner or I have to have something to eat if your body's not asking for it and you don't want it and i found that especially women are very afraid mm -hmm. of eating calories during the day yeah. so having a five six seven hundred calorie lunch is terrifying to a lot of people because oh. they're like how am i going to have dinner now because i only have 200 calories left or something like that and so we're not encouraging that counting at all what we're encouraging is you to have something substantial to keep your body well fueled and then at the end of the day you'll be surprised how your body isn't pushing you to keep going back to the pantry for more and it's going to be more satisfied in the evening but you just have to trust that yeah and that's hard it's yeah. so hard because you have to literally rewrite your whole script in the back of your head about how food works you know i kind of wonder and tell me what your thoughts are on this if women not only are afraid to eat during the day because they're worried about the tally of their total calories, but that 
that the body naturally expands, your stomach naturally expands when you put food into it. That's why you wake up and you feel like really lean. And I think a lot of women try to avoid that natural expansion that happens mm -hmm. um, as you put contents into your stomach. Mm -hmm. and it's just a physiological yeah. reaction. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's nothing totally. to avoid. It's just life. And nobody notices it but you. <laughs> I promise you. Exactly. I, I totally agree with you. So let's. there's another one that I wanted to talk about. And that's medications. And this one's always hard uh, when you have someone who comes in and all of a sudden they're on an antidepressant or maybe they're taking a corticosteroid. Um, if they're on a really high estrogen birth control pill or something and they've noticed a shift in their weight. And when you dig a little deeper, okay, they're feeling hungry more often. Mm -hmm. And I struggle with this because it's like, well, you, you gotta be, we're not telling anyone not to take your medications mm -hmm. for that. Absolutely not without talking to your doctor. But it, you have to be aware that, okay, one of the side effects to my medication might be increased hunger. So drawing more awareness to how you're eating really comes in handy there. And that's the focus I always take with those clients is like, wait, let's audit your diet and make sure you're eating the most satiating things. Exactly. But sometimes it's, it's a little bit of an anvil. You throw yeah. a new medication and you're hungrier. I think a lot of times focusing on healthy fats for those mm -hmm. clients is really, really important because healthy fats are the thing that send that signal to your brain that you're full and that you're satisfied. Yeah. And so by really focusing on those things versus trying to stay away from them, because sometimes fats are scary for people because they are higher in calories than carbohydrates or proteins. But if we really focus on those things and we get your brain feeling satisfied, a lot of times we can bring some of those hunger levels mm -hmm. and cues down. For sure. For sure. That's all I got to say about that. I agree. Great. Just a few honorable mentions and then we'll, we'll wrap this up for you guys. But if, as always, if you guys have other questions or other inklings about why you're always hungry, you can always shoot us a message on Instagram at nutrition.awareness. Uh, but a few other ones that deserve noticing, but I don't think are the biggest drivers, uh, would be one, de dehydration, when people aren't drinking enough fluids. And you're more likely to crave fluid-filled foods yeah. when you're dehydrated. I know a really good example of this for me is when I wake up in the morning and I want, like, cereal <laughs> or I want like a big glass of juice or something like that and then I drink a full cup of water then I'm like oh now I want eggs yeah. like I didn't really want that uh, I just I was just dehydrated so so yes while water is not a way to take your hunger away like I don't encourage people that if you're hungry just drink water that's yeah. silly but making sure that you are well hydrated throughout the day will enable you to tune into those signals a lot better for sure I'd also say alcohol. If you're somebody who drinks a lot of alcohol, either you know Saturday night goes crazy, or if you have a few drinks at night, that can inhibit your natural hunger cues and drive you to not only want to eat not so healthy things, but more of it. Yeah, it <laughs> definitely brings down your inhibitions. And a lot of yeah. times, events with alcohol are also paired with events with foods that aren't so great yep. for you as well. <laughs> we'll do a podcast episode all about alcohol. But that's one. And the last one I want to mention is stress. I think this can go either way. I would say a lot of times when people are really stressed and they're stress eating, it's not really hunger related, though some people are. And other people are completely opposite and they don't eat at all when they're stressed. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I find it's dependent on the severity of the stress. Mm -hmm. So if it's like a trauma related stress, a lot of times you don't want to be around food. You're not hungry at all. Your whole digestive system is just kind of shut down and hunger is not important to your survival right. at that point. But when it's those chronic low level stresses like your kids failing math or you lost your car keys and things like that, it's going to be really easy for you to turn to the brownies or the drive through as a quick little pick me up. Yeah. Kind of a nice situation. distraction too. Right. It's like, right. oh, I don't want to think about these emails. <laughs> I could eat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's me. If I don't want to do something, I'm like, yeah, I'll just. I could just eat instead. <laughs> just eat instead. <laughs> <laughs> and then ten minutes later, I'm like, oh, I can go back and eat. <laughs> so I don't know if it's necessarily a physiological hunger. It's just right. kind of more of a desire that makes you feel like you're always hungry. And so people will say like, oh, I'm always hungry. It's like, mm, just because you're always eating doesn't mean you're always hungry. Yeah. One thing I tell my clients to kind of evaluate whether they're actually hungry or not is would you eat carrot sticks right now yeah i do it with an apple okay so like it's it can't be a food that you're like real psyched about yeah um it, it has to be a food where you're like eh, it's okay so like would you eat a carrot stick right now if the answer is no but i would eat a snickers bar yeah. or i would eat a steak or i would eat chicken parmesan 
you're not actually hungry, you're just probably having a craving. And in that case, that's probably you need to go back to those nutrients that we talked about and making sure what you're eating is well balanced. Yeah. But if you're actually hungry, it's time to eat something that yeah. is well balanced. Exactly. I think listeners, if, if you want to do a fun little exercise, is to close your eyes right now and feel the sensation of being full. Like you just ate a huge salmon filet with mashed potatoes and asparagus. And if I came up to you and I was like, would you like another salmon filet? You would be like, <laughs> absolutely not. But if I came by and I was like, madame, would you like an ice cream with hot fudge? There's always room for ice cream. You're like, well, I can unbuckle a notch here. And that's a great signal too to, to tune into. I mm-hmm. love the carrot sticks. I always use an apple because I'm like, oh yeah. Thanks yeah. So. Well, guys, those were seven-ish. At least. I know. We, we, we really just spewed them out for you guys. Reasons why you might always be hungry. If you are thinking of a friend or family member or colleague who is constantly talking about how hungry they are, always trying to fight against their body, and you thought of their name while you were listening to this, please send the episode to them. Seriously, do the world a favor. Do yourself a favor so they shut up and, and give them this information. And if you really like the episode, we ask that you share it on social media. It really helps us grow. It helps us get the message out and helps people learn real nutrition information, not just random stuff that people pull out of their butts and post online. So we love to see when you guys share the podcast on Instagram and tag us at nutrition.awareness. Thanks.